What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about a very common issue on Land Rover Discovery 2's. That is the crankshaft position sensor. This truck, since I've owned it, I've never done anything with the crank sensor. A couple days ago, I was driving home from work and pulled up to a uh, traffic light and the truck just shut off. Started right back up, drove it home, got home, got back in it to go leave somewhere while it was still warm. Like I just got home, but I was came home to get ready to leave. I had a crank but no start situation. Let it sit for a little while, had something I had to go do, came home, went to start doing some diagnostics on it, truck fired right up, first try. Yesterday, got in it, cranked it up, drove fine, went to where I needed to go, came back, stopped at my mom's house right down the road here, got back in it while it was still warm, another no crank, uh, another crank, no start situation. Came home, got in it this morning, cranked right up, uh, truck went into limp mode, which I had the the mode and the sport light flashing on the dash, uh, and the truck mechanically locked itself into third gear, and got home, ran some diagnostics, so I'll show you guys what I've come across, and I'll show you why I'm leaning towards the crank sensor, and then we'll go ahead and I'll show you how to swap the crank sensor out on this truck. It's not super difficult, but it is in kind of a tight spot. So we got the Nanocom plugged in bring you guys in here and I'll show you what um, codes I have and why I'm leaning towards the crank sensor. We'll go to Discovery 2. Electronic. First thing I want to do is I'm going to show you this uh, transmission code that I have. So what I have here is a P1884 CAN message invalid. And I'll show you in the RAVE manual why I think this code has appeared. Now we're going to go to our engine computer. There'll be a couple of secondary and air injection codes in here because they're, they live permanently in my computer because I don't have secondary air injection anymore. So we'll just bypass those real quick. All right, so this is the code that I have. It's a P1000, which is just a generic code, but reference mark, detector fault, reluctor wheel. So this code and the code I have in the transmission, the code in the transmission is, a, there's a, a bunch of codes by that number, but one of those is engine RPM signal. So between this code saying that I have the reluctor wheel fault, the reference mark detector, which is the crankshaft position sensor, and the fact that I have a transmission code that's throwing that it's a possibility that it's lost its RPM signal. This is why I'm thinking that I have the crankshaft position sensor going bad, even though I don't have a crankshaft position sensor code. All right, here we are underneath the truck. We are looking at the driver's side exhaust manifold okay so right here where i'm touching my finger is a little plastic cover that is where your crankshaft position sensor is it's underneath that cover so obviously there's some mud and build up on that i'm going to get that cleaned off i just wanted to show you guys what mine looks like without touching it um, so if you guys look under here and your truck's as dirty as mine uh, you might go well, where the heck is that thing well, well there it is Hopefully now you can see the two bolts that are exposed right there. Those are the two two bolts that come out that remove the cover. I don't know if you guys are actually going to be able to see what I'm doing. I've got a 7 millimeter socket on the quarter inch drive ratchet. I'm going to wedge my hand up in here next to the exhaust manifold. And make sure your truck's cooled off when you're doing this job because it is in a tight spot and it's hot up there. These aren't the hardest bolts to access on a Discovery 2, but they're definitely not the easiest to get at. There's your other bolt. Now we can remove the cover. And there's the cover. So there is the crankshaft sensor itself. With the cover off, trying to get the light so y'all can see it, so it ain't washing out. So we got two more little bolts on there. I am gonna take a wire brush and clean around it before I take it off because it's packed full of mud up in there. All right, next step is get in here with a eight millimeter socket. I have to have a 15, 16, so that we 
close to the same size, fits in there good. Access, but just take your time. Don't get frustrated. All right, so there's the crank sensor. wire up is the connector and this connector is notoriously tight and a pain in the butt all right guys so here's the crankshaft this sensor out of my truck this is a good known replacement out of one of my parts trucks this is a factory original Bosch the reason I'm gonna go ahead and install a used one is basically for testing this isn't a horrible job to do and if I replace the sensor I want to replace it with an OEM Bosch sensor and it's 130 something dollars so i don't want to take a shot in the dark without being able to confirm that the sensor is going bad so since i have a known good sensor i'm gonna go ahead and install this one run it if it solves my problems then i'll go ahead and buy a new one if you don't have the luxury of having a spare um, if you have a no crank no start and you have a crank resistant sensor code or codes related to crank resistant sensor I mean, it's a, a very, very good possibility. This is a known issue on these trucks is for this crank sensor to go bad. There's no fail safe on this. If this thing goes bad, the truck will not run. So if you have a crank, no start issue. And you have any sort of codes related to the crank sensor, just go ahead and get one, swap it out, and it should take care of your problems. All right, guys, so installation is reversal removal. So getting your plug plugged in is probably the hardest part. You got to really wedge your arm up in there. I can only get one hand up in there. I got to kind of fish them together and squeeze with one hand. It's kind of a pain in the neck. The next thing is getting the sensor in. You got to make sure that your little bracket lines up and then the sensor itself lines up over those two studs. And then a very critical part of this are these little spacers here. You have to reinstall these little spacers. So be very mindful when you're taking it apart, when you take those lock nuts off, that those spacers are going to be on there too do not lose those spacers you got to keep you got to keep track of those put the spacers on the studs and put the nuts back on the studs and we'll put the cover back on all right guys we got the spacers back on and we got the nuts back on so now go ahead and get those tightened up i think you guys can see that up in there don't over tighten those they don't they're very small they do not need to be super tight just snug them up all right, guys, so we got the new crank sensor put in. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to reset adaptive values. According to the Brave Manual, it's something you have to do. Okay, I always do it twice just for fun. So we get a start. Nice. back I'm gonna go back into the nanocom here and we are going to clear the faults which again my secondary injection is always there so don't judge that yep, that's the only one we got no more check engine light don't worry about those four little fellas that's a rear wheel, wheel speed sensor that's my next project there you go guys, crank position sensor on a Land Rover Discovery 2. Not the hardest thing, not the easiest thing. Um, skinny, long arms definitely helps. Um, it's kind of a tight spot to get into, but it's not impossible. And it's a very common issue on the Land Rover Discovery 2. So thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next one, which is probably going to be rear wheel speed sensors. Thanks guys.